Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. $10 billion is now gone from the cryptocurrency market cap as Bitcoin and many other altcoins are deep in red. Bitcoin has once again followed Wall Street. It says Bitcoin has failed to sustain its recent bullish run and has dropped to approximately 10,600 US dollars. Most altcoins have mimicked Bitcoin's move, resulting in a $10 billion loss from the total market cap. The news that we got yesterday was that the stock market had begun to rise, and as such, the cryptocurrency market had also risen as well, I guess based on the idea that speculative assets during this time are moving in coordinated fashions. However, the situation has reversed in the past 24 hours. Bitcoin was unable to maintain its run and dropped sharply from 10750 to an intraday low of $10,525 on Binance. Despite recovering some ground since then to above 10600 Bitcoin is still down by over 1% in a day. So the news that's floating around right now, apparently what happened was, now here's where it gets kind of choppy, is that apparently the U.S. president has delayed and or stopped the next stimulus package. And as such, stocks fell, and so did the cryptocurrency market. The news that I was able to find, at least at the moment, is kind of the idea that if you stop another stimulus package, uh, it dropped stock markets because the idea would be that trillions more dollars would be printed and therefore pushed into the markets, giving the market new hope that people would start sloshing their money around once again to different companies and corporations, therefore keeping things afloat. And on the other side is that uh, if the stimulus bill was cut or stopped or delayed or slowed down, this would mean that trillions of dollars were once again not being printed and also, this would not affect the cryptocurrency market in a positive way because the cryptocurrency market tends to move up on the idea that the U.S. dollar could potentially inflate further and or hyperinflate with the printing of trillions of dollars. So it's like a, I don't even know if you can call it a, a double-edged sword, uh, but all markets right now are very choppy. Nothing is stable uh, because of events that will be occurring in the next couple of weeks. There's a lot of indecisiveness going on and no one knows where anything is going to go. I've been trying to look around for news for uh, traditional markets to see what people are saying, and it's kind of like the... You know the phrase, the blind leading the blind? No one really knows where anything is going to go. So at the moment, our market fell by a smidge. Um, altcoins took a lot of the, 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 the brunt. Is that the, the way of saying it? The, of, the, of the market falling. Bitcoin fell by a bit. It's already working its way back up. But many other altcoins that were already unstable have uh, continued to fall. That's the price news that we have at the moment. It apparently had to do with the the stimulus bill being chopped. And uh, without further ado, let's move on. In, and I mean probably one of the most popular news stories I'll show you in a second. It was actually a bit much and it's actually also quite obvious. So I have no idea how this became so popular. Speaking at the LA Blockchain Summit conference on the 6th of October, Ripple co-founder Char no, Chris Larson, I'm going to say Charles Larson, Chris Larson slammed the United States for falling behind the race to design the next generation of the global financial system. The address expanded on some of Larson's frustrations with the U.S. regulations that has led to the company considering moving to a different jurisdiction. Larson argues the U.S. has fallen woefully behind in the ongoing tech war, asserting that China's central government has outpaced American lawmakers in providing legislative clarity, allocating resources, building infrastructure, and fostering innovation in blockchain and other emerging technologies, including big data, surveillance, and AI. He said China has recognized that those technologies are the keys to those who is going to control the next gen financial system? I love that uh, surveillance was also one of these. So, mm -hmm. Swift and correspondent banking is not going to be the system we are going to be living with over the next two decades. The Ripple co-founder emphasized the failure of the U.S. to embrace initiatives 
to embrace initiatives like the U.S. digital dollar, noting that China is way ahead on central bank digital currencies. Larson added that the central bank digital currency will allow them to spread the yuan globally and undermine the dominance of the U.S. dollar in international markets. Uh, this has been happening for a very long time. This is not the first conversation that we've had between Ripple X U.S. regulators. <clears throat> I think Ripple had in their mind for a very long time that eventually at some point that U.S. regulators and lawmakers makers, makers would eventually get it or fall in line or simply go, hey, they're doing it. Let's do it as well. For those of you who've not been here since 2017, I've mentioned thousands of times that they would not. If you do not know, I am from the States. Uh, I'm sure many of you are as well. And if you dig deep inside of your heart, you know exactly how things run. And you can't even say that they don't run this way. Um, I wholeheartedly assume that things within the states are not, especially when it comes to cryptocurrency regulations, jurisdiction, yada, yada, yada. They're not going to fall in line until anywhere around 2024. And that's still a big if. Uh, the lack of cryptocurrency regulations, tax policies, all these other things that we've been waiting for that we were told that we were going to get in 2017 are not going to happen anytime soon. So... Uh, I, I guess my my shocked feeling has to do with the fact that Ripple, for some reason, thought that uh, they were going to get the regulation that they needed. Uh, and if you've been keeping track as well, tons of companies, tons of, I mean, everything has simply moved out of the U.S. to other places. And I told people a long time ago, that's a very big red flag, because normally what happens is, especially if you are the leader uh, economically of the world and you see people leaving your system, you tend to raise your head up and go, wait, maybe we should... Uh, kind of fall in line, not even fall in line, just kind of get things in order so that every so that the money stays within our borders, but they haven't done so. Uh, so the major news, and I'm I, I I get why it's significant, but gosh darn it, if it wasn't everywhere, Ripple considering moving headquarters to a more crypto friendly jurisdiction. Ripple may move its headquarters from the U.S. Ripple executives threaten move out of U.S. over regulations. They're considering apparently moving to London, Switzerland, Singapore, or Japan. Uh, Chris Larson warns that Ripple may leave U.S. for a more favorable regulatory environment. Crushing regulations could drive Ripple out of U.S. Ripple chairman says firm could leave U.S. if regulatory environment doesn't change. Normally when we get news in general, if we have like very popular news, I may found you know a good six you know whatever so and so uh, articles floating around. This was <clears throat> this was worse than the than the thing that we had yesterday where we had like eighteen different. It was on every single cryptocurrency website. It is major news right now. I'm not exactly sure. Not joking at all. Uh, why this is major news? I think Ripple should have gotten it a long time ago. That regardless of the technology that they may have or the partnerships that they may have in other countries, which is really insane as well because they have so many other partnerships in so many other countries around the world. They still do not, at least to my direct knowledge, have any information as to if XRP is considered a uh, security. I think they've been winning a couple of the, what's it called? A couple of the lawsuits that have been filed against them over the last couple of days. I think one has been allowed to go further in some sort of way, but the other ones have been dropping like flies. For those of you who don't know, the company Ripple was sued a couple of times in beginning of near the end of 2017, the beginning of 2018, where people were claiming uh, that the cryptocurrency XRP that's um, closely linked to them is a nice way of saying it was apparently a security, and people were filing lawsuits where they said, I lost $300. Not joking, you can find it. And therefore, I'm going to now sue you because you're a mega billion dollar company and I'm going to try and get money from you. So a lot of these things have been dropped over the last couple of weeks. Um, not really much more I can say. I think the smartest move for them <clears throat> would be to maintain an office somewhere in the States, maybe somewhere where they have the, the best tax rates, even even in New York is also complete garbage as well. I have a friend who lives in New York, and he's been telling me how regulations have hampered so many things when it comes to the cryptocurrency space. And also just uh, the, the entire idea of the bit license. Remember a couple of months ago when they were like, the, the regulators within New York were like, maybe we should, you know, maybe change the bit license. And somebody else was like, nah, it's okay. Like it's, I, I believed for a time that it must that it had to do with the fact that they were trying to drive people out so that they could have their own take their place, i.e., who cares about Ripple, who cares about Kraken, who cares about this, who cares about that, 
we can use the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ and Fidelity uh, to replace these things. We can make our own cryptocurrencies. But even then, none of, none of these things are actually coming forward. I mean, we do have backed what have you. Uh, the point is, anyway, um, I have a feeling. Now, bear with me on this one. Ripple's probably not going anywhere. I think they are probably of the mindset that they are going to be one of the chosen ones. And this is why I think that Coinbase and Gemini have not left. They have uh, maybe different offices in other parts of the world, but they are based in the United States. And this is why I think Ripple is waiting as well. Because I think they have this idea that when cryptocurrency regulations are finally dished out, those who have remained will kind of get the biggest pat on the back and say, yeah, buddy, you, you know, you lasted through all the turmoil, but that's not how it's going to happen. Uh, just, I, I, I can feel it. Anyway, the point is, um, Ripple once again doesn't care for the lack of U.S. regulations. I don't think those are going to happen anytime soon. Nearly every other country at some point has come forward talking about that they're going to be releasing a central bank digital currency. When it, when it's going to be released, they've been testing it or have been dropping uh, tax rates to 0% on cryptocurrency companies. But the U.S. thus far has done nothing except for kind of run around in a circle saying that they're going to give regulations. And we've had Hester Pierce uh, huffing and puffing saying that we also need regulations, but I don't think those are going to happen anytime soon. So, yeah, that's the mega news of today. They're not going anywhere. I know they're not going anywhere. And they know they're not. They, 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 they're probably using it as like a way to say like, hey, buddy, if you don't do something, I'm going to walk out the door. But the but the buddy doesn't care if they walk out the door. Uh, let's move on. In it takes a day to make some sense kind of news. According to Block One, the company behind EOS, Google Cloud may become the next EOS block producer. In response to the news, EOS soared by 17%. Remember yesterday I was like, why is EOS? I think EOS had gone up by like 6 7%. And I was like, there was no EOS news. A couple of hours later, this news came out. Software and EOS developer Block One announced the news of Google Cloud joining the community via a blog post published earlier today on the 6th of October. According to the announcement, apart from joining the network, Google Cloud is aiming to become a block producer on the chain. The decision to allow Google Cloud to become a block producer will be put to a vote among token holders. Currently, 21 block producers form the core part of the EOS network. Also joining the public blockchain platform will mean that the tech behemoth will bring its premium infrastructure that would benefit the EOS network. The latest development underscores the growing confluence of blockchain and the broader tech scene. Block One CEO Brendan Bloomer stated that EOS is a powerful solution for anyone looking to leverage the decentralized ecosystem with ease. So this news came out and then a couple of hours later, this article popped up. It says Google Cloud has joined EOS as a block producer node. So the news that we had before was that they were thinking about it, that it had to be voted on. I assume, based on this article, that it has already been voted on. It says Google Cloud will run a block producer node for EOS, meaning that Google essentially is now one of the 21 block producers who is going to be validating transactions on top of EOS. Now, the 17% rise makes a lot of sense. Uh, the drop that we incurred just a couple of hours ago <clears throat> within or the, I guess maybe from Bitcoin that dragged every other coin down has caused EOS to also drop as well. However, it is still in the green. I think it's up by 6 7 or 8% or something like that at the current time. If this news is true and Google is actually a partner in EOS, I wonder what will happen next. I assume there are some type of big plans. You don't just simply get Google popping out of the woodwork saying, well, EOS sounds cool, but I can't pronounce Ethereum, so I guess I'll just go with EOS. I assume somewhere behind the scenes, something big is going to be taking shape. We're getting a lot more EOS news and a lot more Ripple news. We were getting no EOS news and no Ripple news for months on end, and now they are constantly in the news back to back. Uh, so I like to try to remain optimistic, to think that something good could come of these things. One can only assume... And the really crazy part is, uh, for those of you who remember as well, remember, what was it? It's It's been at least a year at this point where the people from Tron came forward and said that they had a partnership with Amazon and that Amazon was simply, no, no, and that and that the people, 
the people from Tron said that they had a partnership with Amazon. And the partnership was that Tron was simply using Amazon's, I think, cloud services or something like that. I read this and I was like, okay, maybe it's the same thing. But nope, it's actually Google validating transactions on the EOS blockchain. So we'll see where this goes. And it makes sense why the price rose. And I don't really know where to go from here because I don't want to speculate too far as to what this could possibly mean. But it's Google. So, of course, the price was going to rise. And without further ado, let's move on. Next up. The Central Bank of Korea is moving to the preparatory stage for a potential digital yuan, which will be a central bank digital currency. Recently, the central bank began reviewing the legal and legal and tech, technical feasibility of issuing national currencies just in case they need a rises. However, the bank now plans to debut a pilot program to trial the issuance and circulation of the potential digital currency as the Korea Herald reported on Wednesday. The central bank disclosed its plans to start a pilot program by next year on the possible introduction of a national digital currency. The pilot program is basically aimed at test running the issuance and circulation of the digital currency. According to officials from the central bank, the planned pilot program will be conducted in a similar approach to use those used for banknotes. Uh, and the other, I guess the main part is, is that apparently they're doing this just in case the need arises. I assume that's a 50-50, but it, I then also question like what would be the actual event that would take place that would cause the need to arise for you to push this thing out there. Um, once again, abundantly clear that every single country is working on these things, even the ones that we've been getting news that they're kind of afraid of issuing a central bank digital currency. I assume that they're trying to make sure that they all have the infrastructure beforehand, you know, just as a just-in-case kind of sitting on the side. I, I wonder explicitly what their actual fears are. I had assumed for a time that they would simply rush these things out. <clears throat> I think that the, the news of the fear that we've been getting from central banks is that they're afraid of it undermining, I think, the actual issuance of their normal currency or the actual usage of it. I know that one of the biggest fears that um, I've seen echoed many times before about China's currency, their digital currency, is that it would be able to be worldwide. Uh, that currencies would no longer be required to be inside of one border, that simply by downloading an app, or we, we, we've heard this news before, that you'd be able to use their currency within your land, your whatever. Like, imagine if they integrated it into some type of very popular app that we've been hearing about in the news a lot lately that allowed people to use it. That would mean that their currency almost immediately, if not instantaneously, would become worldwide, which then undermines the use of the digital or, or, or of the dollar in general. The same exact thing with Libra. Imagine waking up and you have 2 billion people who have now access to Libra. Well, what's the point of really using the US dollar anymore? Um, I still think these things are going to be a disaster. I, I can just feel it. Like I know that they're not going to work out, especially if we get into the, if we get into the actual realistic discussion of if someone releases their currency and it does become worldwide or widely adopted or widely used, then what happens to the other currencies? Like, like realistically, like, like th think of a country's currency no longer being used by their own people. Where, where, where does that then lead us? What happens if, if 2.5 billion people are using Libra? What happens, I guess this is also the other part where we uh, remember before where governments kept on saying that uh, cryptocurrencies weren't a threat. And then they stopped saying that altogether. I guess this is also one of the main fears for Bitcoin. We, we keep seeing that it, it, it's constantly put down by governments by them saying, oh, it's too volatile. The price is too low. It's not going to X, Y, and Z. Uh, but this is probably also the fear as well. What if Bitcoin does have, you know, takeoff potential? What if Bitcoin does one day have private transactions? And what if Bitcoin is chosen as the currency to be used by billions of people around the world and they decide to not use Korea's coin or the US dollar coin? Uh, so anyway... The point is, um, they're planning on creating their own digital currency, of course. I guess with, we'll start hearing about all the plans of all these things next year. We were supposed to have, I think at this point, have had uh, China's central bank digital currency and more so, I guess, even also Libra. But maybe 19 has slowed down some things. Next up, in really weird news, and I'm surprised that this actually was even allowed to launch, 
LVC, the crypto exchange operator and blockchain business unit of Line, is launching a service that allows users to lend crypto assets like Bitcoin and Ether to its exchange known as BitMax. In return, lenders will receive a rental fee or basically like an interest rate from what they have lent out. Between the 7th of October and the 30th of October, the company will run a campaign that will let users earn up to 10% as an annual fee for their lending service, according to the statement filed by Line at the Tokyo Stock Exchange on Tuesday. Line, for those of you who don't know, is a popular messaging app in Japan with more than 80 million users. So the interesting part for me is that a, a texting, a messaging app, is now a cryptocurrency lending platform through their service. So imagine WhatsApp or some other platform allowing cryptocurrency lending. And imagine you, through that app, as you've lent your crypto out, you start receiving an interest rate or money. I, I, I think the return it said here was every day. Yeah, the, the rental fee is incurred every day starting on the day after the rental. So... Imagine you using a texting app, you lending out your cryptocurrency to whoever is being lent out to, and you receiving money daily from what you've lent out. This changes the world completely. This is why I said I was, I'm was i pretty shocked that Line was able to kind of do something like, like I, I, I know it's a partnership with BitMax, but this opens up the door to a the, the possibility of once again, like, I still do think that staking and mining and all these other things are going to be the future of passive income. I think the it'll be an alternative to owning property and many other things and not even getting into the discussion of, of owning digital property. But think of how interesting this is. Imagine you no longer have to rely on a stock exchange or a dividend or a mutual fund to receive a a passive income in some sort of way. You can do it directly from your phone and then you get that money directly to the wallet on your phone and then you go grocery shopping, you decide to travel somewhere, you simply tap your phone. It's 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 kind of uh, mind-bogglingly blowing. Uh, I cringed there for a second. Uh, just all the things that are really going on. Apparently from Coindesk Japan, it's going to be supporting Bitcoin, Ether, XRP, Litecoin, and Bcash for the lending service. This is absolutely incredible. Uh, nothing like this. Nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Nothing like this will be launching within the United States anytime soon. Nothing. I That that much I can definitely promise you. I'm still shocked that Ripple is still within the U.S. Um, yeah. Let's see how this goes because I assume after a quarter or two... Um, if this does well, if Line has made a very good profit, if people have been using their lending service and just even more so, 10% is actually completely insane. Regardless of which of these five coins it's it's being used for. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of these companies popping up recently talking about passive income streams and or interest rates uh, for, for the things that they're doing. And they've ranged anywhere from 6 to 10%. 10% back every year on your Bitcoin is madness or any other coin. That's just not an interest rate that you hear about anymore, especially if you get into the discussion of these coins. Imagine you lend out Bitcoin or any other coin and the coin itself in US dollars continues rising in price and you still make 10% off of that because I would assume you're being paid back in Satoshis. Anyway, the point is, yeah, this is nuts. Uh, probably not going to be the most popular news story, as I think I only found this on one website. Uh, however, yeah, the future is shaping up to be very passive. Uh, this is why I still, the, I mean, just logically, the people who are into cryptocurrency already, who have been accumulating, we're going to benefit the most from all of these things. Like, imagine if you started crypto buying a week ago, and you have one one-hundredth of a Bitcoin. Imagine if you can only afford one one hundredth of a Bitcoin. Now imagine you can only afford that once a week, but you've been buying for the past two or three years. You have a, a huge chunk. Now imagine being able to get 10% on that. It's it's just, you know, uh, logic. Anyway, let's move on. In, wow, this is super popular news. The popular Ethereum toolkit MetaMask 
now allows users to swap tokens from within the app itself. MetaMask owner Consensus announced the news on Tuesday, saying that the new feature would request token prices from decentralized exchanges and aggregators so that users can get the best prices. Apparently, MetaMask will be using the, de- the, wow, the decentralized exchanges Uniswap, AirSwap, Kyber, Zero X API, One Inch Exchange, uh-huh, Dex.ag, Paraswap, Toddle, and private market makers for this feature. This approach means that users won't need to navigate these platforms individually to find the optimal price. The feature initially is available for users of MetaMask on Firefox and mobile. Uh, it doesn't say which coins you can swap to. This was very popular. This was a very popular news story that MetaMask One has now over one million active users. I haven't used haven't used MetaMask since 2017. I remember it was like the clunkiest thing in the entire world. Apparently, it has gotten better. Uh, it says altcoin swapping market, but they don't say exactly which coins. I'm not sure if this is simply ERC20 coins. I'm not sure if it's simply DeFi coins. Uh, no real announcement as to which coins are swappable, but a lot of people like this news because it was also all over the place that uh, MetaMask now allows for token swaps. Cool. And without further ado, uh, also in very, I think this is huge news, but I don't think it is that popular. Um, Marty Chavez, one of Wall Street's most well-known technologists, has fallen deeper into the crypto rabbit hole. The former CFO and CTO of banking behemoth Goldman Sachs is joining Block One, who we just spoke about. They're the creators of EOS, as chair of its advisory board, according to an announcement on Tuesday. Block One is the firm behind, there we go, behind EOS. Chavez, who as co-head of securities at Goldman, played a role in overseeing the earliest cryptocurrency developments in the bank, will challenge leadership, provide counsel on business strategy, expand networks, and help develop a governance framework. Chavez is also an advisor to the former Commodity Futures Trading Commission Chair Giancarlo, Chris Giancarlo's Digital Dollar Project. Uh, th- a lot of the major names in the cryptocurrency space have been acquiring some major names from the traditional financial world. I, I don't really feel like expanding too much on that, but it's clear if you, you must have an enormous amount of money, think of how much money you would need to give the former CFO and CTO of Goldman Sachs to be able to have him join your ranks. I assume they're not paying him just a million dollars a year. The news that we had from EOS many years ago has shaped to be quite different from the news that we have now. It appears that they are trying to form something absolutely great. And I mean, listen, they got $4 billion from their ICO, so they'd better be doing something with all that money. But I wonder where all of this is going to go. I wonder, will there be integrations with Goldman? I wonder, is there something happening behind the scenes with a bank who plans on using EOS's blockchain? Like, where will all of this go? It's one thing to hire these people. But I think, and and I can't be the only one who feels this way. I would like to see some type of action something being executed or and or simply just some type of news as to where all these things are going to go. Uh, the 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 acquisition news is absolutely wonderful. Wow, that's incredible that they got this guy to join their ranks. Uh, but it's kind of the same exact thing from Ripple that we heard many years ago where they got a lot of the regulators to also join their ranks. And I always just, I think I am more futuristically optimistic than I maybe should be sometimes, because I think I expect things to go quicker. I mean, to, to be fair, I, I give things a, a good three to five year time frame for things to really get moving. Uh, but I just, maybe this also has to do with the launch of Voice, which we also haven't had any news about as well over the last couple of weeks, which I think should have officially launched by now, but we have no proper news on that. Anyway, yeah, um, major acquisition. I'm going to assume this maybe ties into the usage of Google or Google using EOS or being one of their block producers. But yeah. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. 
Bolero Bastos, Crayola Michelle URL on crypto with Lionel, Tigger Macho Nisa, Bake Me a Cake, Arf Medic 17, Anytime Fitness Monks Corner Staff, Bodie McBoatface, Yes to Crypto, Miller Hitch Test Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day. Minting Coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Anthony Charles, Nick Mon, Jalavori, Paxis, Vlad the Impaler, Richie Rich III, Setsuna, Damian, Crypto Artist, Cold E3D, Bankroll Network, 242 to the World, Wise Knight, Owl, Jared Schneider, Master Ventures in Thailand, Moher Maroney, Adam Grasic, Todd Mullis, A Bibliophobia, The Animal Reader, John Sarson, Nostromo Martin Stoyer, Joshua Vineyard, Moonman High, XRP, Utopia 569, Oscar Maldonado, Yasha Harari, Attila the Han, David James, Navarro Williams, Decentralized Peter, Auspicious Agile and Blockchain, Tolek Banan, and Professor Wally from Gunbot University. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a supporter of the channel in their own way. At the moment, Bitcoin is down by 1%. It is at 10611 US dollars. Everything else in the top 10 is in red, as one might expect. EOS is currently still up by 5.45% on that news. Here's the spike. Right here, I guess once that news was released or people realized that there was a run in the market. And here's the subsequent drop as we got, I assume this was the uh, the era of the stimulus news happening. The rest of the market's in red. I don't think anything is, Ethereum Classic is up by a smidge. Everything up is down. All the DeFi coins are taking a massive beating. Um, Yearn Fi, Yearn, Yearn Finance. Is currently at fifteen thousand dollars. It is going down by seventeen percent per day. Uh, the last time we heard about Yearn Finance was that it was supposed to be touching forty thousand dollars per coin. Oh, yeah, all the DeFi coins are just not having a a great day. Um, and Uniswap is a smidge away from exiting the top fifty coins because you know logic. Um, I do hope that you all enjoyed. Hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.